Well, let's talk next about dividing fractions. Before we do that, just something that you need to remember. If I give you two numbers, let's say 22 and 5, and I were to ask you to add those two numbers, does the order you put those in matter? Meaning, 22 plus 5, put that order, switch them around, 5 plus 22. Does that matter? Yes, no, or I don't know. No, it doesn't matter. Either way, that'd be okay. What if you were subtracting? 22 minus 5, is that the same thing as 5 minus 22? Does the order matter? Yes, it does. You must know which one comes first, which, one's comes, which one's next. That's a big, big thing. What about multiplying? Does the order matter? If you're doing 22 times 5, switch them. Is that the same thing as 5 times 22? That's okay. Does the order matter? No, it doesn't, it doesn't matter one bit. Either way, it's okay. What if you were dividing? 22 divided by 5 versus 5 divided by 22. Does the order matter? Yes. Anybody answer? I don't know to any of those. Okay. I don't see any hands out there. That's good. Yeah, the order matters. So now we're dividing fractions. We have one-third divided by two-fifths. Yes, the order matters. Now you learned somewhere, I guess in fourth grade or somewhere back there, one of those is the, I don't know, the divisor, one is the dividend, one is the whatever. They all these crazy words, and you forgot all that. It doesn't matter. So let's make it real simple. I have two fractions. It's one-third divided by two-fifths. That's the first number, and that's the second number. You got that? I mean, some of y'all going to add in for the Aggies once again. That's the first number. That's the second number. So here's what you do. When you divide, the first number, you leave it alone. I'm going to rewrite this. The first number, I just, I don't mess with it. Leave it just like it is. But now, the second number, I flip it upside down. You can call that the reciprocal, the inverse, whatever it is. The flipped over version thereof. I flip it over and put now 5 on top and 2 on the bottom. But now, I multiply. Here's what's so nice about dividing fractions. You never really divide fractions. You don't. Yes, you do, but you don't, but you do. You end up multiplying. A division problem with fractions ends up as a multiplication problem, which you should already know how to do because we covered that. So now, it's one-third times 5 over 2, 5 halves. How do you multiply fractions? Multiply the two top numbers. 1 times 5 is 5. 3 times 2 is 6. There we go. That's the answer. Anything to do with that? No. Can you reduce it? No. It's already a proper fraction. We're good. That's the final answer. What about this? It's the reverse places, but now there's a difference. This is the first one. There's the second number. You must keep in mind the order they're in. So, two-fifths divided by one-third. Well, the first number, two-fifths. Leave it alone. Don't mess with him. Second number, flip him over. So one over three becomes three over one, and I end up multiplying. Whoa, just a multiplication problem. So now it's two times three is six, Five times one is five. What's wrong with that number? Well, there's nothing, quote, wrong with it. That's mathematically the right answer, but it's not in the proper form. That's an improper fraction. Bigger number on top, smaller on the bottom. So I do what? Change that into a mixed number or mixed fraction. Well, let's see. Technically, if you want to do it this way, it's six. Divided by 5. 5 will go into 6 one time. So the whole number is 1. 1 times 5 is 5. I subtract. The leftover is 1. The remainder is 1. 1 and 1 fifth is the final answer. Always when you take this, convert that to a mixed number, double checking is real simple. Five, 1 times 5 is 5 plus 1. Okay, there we go. That's all you're doing. 
Now, in case you haven't gathered this, uh, this is not a dry erase board. It's a wet erase board. Um, and so I can't just erase this real fast and do it. I've got to get some kind of gimpy wet thing and erase all this. So because that takes too much time, that's why I stop in the middle and come back with another little short segment. So that's okay. Some of y'all have short attention spans and about five minutes is all you can take per video lecture. So let's stop. I'm going to do a few more of these before we summarize all this and um, do something else.